Converting color images to black and white gives you so much creative control, but the default, or at least the most common tools to do this, tend not to give you exciting results. Let me show you what I mean. Here's an image where the color blue plays a strong contrasting element against the snowy trees. But watch what happens when I add a hue saturation adjustment and I drag the saturation down to zero to convert it to a black and white. Well, it is black and white, but it's not that exciting. I'll hit delete. What if I added a gradient map, which is a good way to get a quick, pretty decent looking black and white conversion? Well, that did better, and that's because it's applying different algorithms than to desaturate, and we'll get more into that in other vi videos. But that's still not the, the best way for this particular image. So before I actually get into that part, there's actually some aesthetic things that I need to address that are really bothering me. I mean, I love the leading diagonal lines going up, but I think these treetops are too close to the edge. There needs to be more negative space, more breathing room. And I don't like how this tree actually breaks the top border because typically if something visually dissects an image from top to bottom, it makes whatever is on the smaller side visually static and irrelevant. Obviously there are exceptions to every rule, but that's one of the ones I like to follow. So I'm going to hit Command or Control J only because I don't like to work on my original background layer. So now I have a duplicate layer and I need to copy this blue sky and make it bigger. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit C for the crop tool or I could come all the way over here and select the crop tool. And then I'm just going to click and grab the very top middle and just drag it up a bit, not a ton, just enough. Hit enter. So now I've stretched it. Now if I turn off the background layer, you'll see that there's nothing up here. There's the white and gray checkerboard indicates that it's transparent up here. I'm going to command or control minus just, just to shrink the image a touch. Now I want to replicate this blue up here, but this is complicated because this is a blue sky and you'll see what I mean. I'll, let me just show you. If I hit M for the marquee and I select this, I hit B for brush and I hold down the alt or option key to temporarily, temporarily change to a color picker. I choose the middle blue, right? Manner control zero to go back down. And then I'll hit shift delete, which activates the fill dialog box. And I'll choose the foreground color because I just selected the perfect middle sky foreground color and it'll auto load. Now, once I go to select deselect or command or control D to get rid of that selection, look what's happened. The sun is on this side of the sky, as you can tell by the highlights on the trees. And obviously everything on the left side of the trees are in shadow. So that's why at some point the sky does match up nicely, but as it gets to the darker and darker, it doesn't look accurate. So what are we going to do? I hit Command Z to undo that. And I want to start again. Command minus to shrink it a touch. I'll hit M for the marquee tool. And this time I'm just going to select about this much of the sky, something like that. And I'll hit Command or Control J. So all I've done is I've created this. And what I want to do is flip it and stretch it. So I'll hit Command or Control T, which activates the free transform. Again, all of these things you can access through the menus. Edit, down to transform, over over to scale, or you could just go by the shortcut, Command T. And then I'll right click inside there and just say flip vertically. So that automatically flipped it. I can then drag it up. Those red or magenta lines lets me know that I'm at the exact spot to have it perfectly aligned. So I'll let go and then I'll hit enter to lock that in place. And notice that once our eyes adjust, there are no lines. It is a perfect seamless match across the blue sky, which is pretty rare. Now I didn't stretch it enough, so I'll hit Command or Control T again, and I'll just stretch this part up. I can hold down the Shift key, so when I'm when I'm doing the stretching, watch, when I'm doing the stretching, it is literally just stretching it up. Hit Enter, that's locked in. So now I just need to get rid of these reflective trees. Probably the quickest way to do that is with the Spot Healing tool right here. Now the Spot Healing tool, and you just paint over whatever you want removed. Now the Spot Healing tool does great things, but it doesn't do great things when edges are there. It just can't handle edges very well. So since it doesn't handle edges well, I'm going to come all the way over here and activate the clone stamp tool, or you can hit the letter, letter S. To use this tool, you have to hold down the Alt or Option key, get this bullseye, and you select where you want to paint from. So that's my selection, right bracket key to make it a little bigger. And I will just paint with that part of the sky and notice how it's always orienting itself. This looks like that was a little too low. So I hit Command Z. Hold the Alt or Option key and kind of select here so it's still the same color blue. And then I'll come back down right in front. I'm still painting with that same blue. Now I need to break this up, select again, come to this side. This is why that spot healing tool is so nice because this is what you'd have to do forever before it was invented. Now I'm going to hit Command or Control 1 just to zoom into 100% of the image. I'm going to use the space bar to temporarily convert my tool over to the hand so I can slide it over and see what's going on. Now I'm going to 
Option click here to get rid of that. I'll make my brush a little smaller with the left bracket key. And I'm gonna paint from this side, maybe even smaller still. So I want to get rid of this little thing right here. And I don't like any of this because that's all reflection. Now, if it's not looking quite right, you need to get closer to where you want to paint, make your brush a little bigger so it'll be more, you know, averaging as it's applying this stuff. I can make my brush smaller if I want a very hard, crisp line right here. Okay, I like where that's going. I like Command or Control Zero. Now I need a tree top, right? So I'm gonna go back over to this um, this middle layer right here, and I want this top. So I'm gonna hit M for the marquee tool. I'm going to select that chunk of tree, hit Command or Control J, and what that did is it just jumped it to its own layer, right? So I'm gonna turn everything back on, tap the V key for the Move tool, it's for move, and I'm gonna click on it and drag it. Oops, it's disappearing, do you see that? That's because it's below that fake sky layer I made. So all I need to do is click on the layer with the tip, drag it above the layer I want it to be in front of, I'll see a cyan line, I'll drop it, and there it is. Now I can quickly just drag and drop right, right over, right over that. Now I'll probably wanna stretch this out a touch by hitting Command or Control T to activate the free transform, and I'll hold the Shift key, and I'll just stretch this a little bit. Maybe I'll even make it a little bit wider. I just don't want it to be a perfect mirror of this side over here. Now obviously this part of the sky is too dark, so the quickest way to fix this, I'm gonna turn off all these eyeballs so I'm only seeing this. That way I don't get confused. And I can actually zoom in so I can really see it, you know, really well. I'll choose select and color range. And yeah, I want it to select this color. I'll hold down the shift key to make sure and I'll drag it. See how there's a plus sign beside my eyedropper? That way it's selecting any variances of color. Once I have the marching ant selection, I do want to refine it. So I'd click on any selection tool, which activates the, the selection toolbar, giving me access to the select and mask dialog box. So I'll click that. And now I can tweak it all I want to. And what do I want to see it on? I'd like to see it on the layers, which is great. Unfortunately for me, I turned off all the layers, so we're not gonna be able to see it at this point. So, but what am, what are we seeing? I selected the blue because it was the easiest, but really I want the white treetop. So I need to hit invert. That inverts my selection. Typically, I always toggle on Smart Radius to let Photoshop look at the edges, and I tell it to look, you know, maybe maybe you know one to two pixels, something like that. Sometimes I'll smooth it, you know, one and feather it maybe half a pixel just to see how that looks. I'll decontaminate the colors. Can't do it here though because I need that reflective blue sky because it's going to be in all the other parts of the tree. So I'm going to leave that blue contamination. I'm going to choose Output to New Layer with Layer Mask. Click OK, and then I'll turn all my other layers back on. I think that did a pretty good job. So I need to, you know, tweak it a bit. V for the Move tool. Now that I can see where it is, maybe I'll hit um, Command T just so I can rotate it a little bit. Enter to anchor it. I'm already at 131%. I don't need to go bigger. So I hit. B for the brush tool, I select my mask, make sure black is in the foreground because I have to paint with black on a white mask. I look up at my opacity, it's 100%, and that's gonna let me quickly fix any of these problems that I'm seeing. I need that to be smaller and harder, so it looks like I have a shorter limb. I can go bigger with the right bracket key here, and I'll type five for 50%. That activated my opacity to 50%. Because there's a lot of ways to adjust it. I can hit this disclosure triangle and drag it. The better way is to just hover over the word and the cursor will turn into a scrubby slider. But even quicker, if you become where you have one hand on your mouse or your Wacom tablet and your left hand or other hand on the keyboard, you can just type four for 40% and it automatically, automatically does it. And that's what I need to blend this in. I need it just to soften that hard line so our eye doesn't detect that there's a problem. Command and control zero. All right. So now I don't feel like anything's clipped. You know, and notice I didn't fix this part over here. But I don't even know that I like these trees coming into this tree. So I might hit the crop tool again and just crop that out. Typically every image can be made better by cropping, period, forever and always. All right, I like, I'll take that. Now we do see a problem. Where's that, where's that line coming from? I'm seeing a line now. Does everybody see that? Oh, is that why? So let me take this with the move tool and just nudge it down. Yeah, it just needed to be nudged down. Somehow it got nudged. I'll hit C for the crop just to come in from the top just a little bit, enter. Okay, now we fixed it. Now we have this nice controlled aesthetic across the image. I'll select the very top layer. And this is one of my all time favorite keyboard short shortcuts. If, if you only learn 20 shortcuts, this is the number one, or at least it's in the top five to learn. Command, Option, Shift, Letter E. That's Control, Alt, Shift, Letter E for Windows users. It compresses all the layers underneath and puts it on top. So whether it's five layers or four, up to, I think it goes up to 4,000 layers, it will squish all together. Now I can manipulate this image as its own thing. So now, 
if I convert it by adding a black and white adjustment layer, it's still gonna do a fairly average job. But now I have access to the color channels and I know I want this blue to go dark because I want it to look like the Ansel Adams prints that have those dark rich skies. Watch this, it just does it mathematically, automatically for me, which is awesome. So don't forget about color channels when you're converting to black and white. It gives you so much isolated control. I'll hit Command Option Shift Letter E to jump that to its own layer. Just to clean up my layers palette or my layers panel so it's not so messy, I'll select this and I'll go all the way down to the original. I'll hit Command or Control G to group it and I will turn off the eyeball for the group. So now I can just toggle on and off to see the difference. Here's where we started and here's what we did with it. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Go home. Yes! That's awesome! What? You just took one in the jugular, man! Huh. Whoa! Yes! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, I did! Is this bad? Is this bad? You should pull that out. It's not cool. Pull it out. Get down, man! 